flatten ears to ground, curve shoulder into the hollow of bones of earth beneath you. We're spending an hour with Kate Moskva from Sala Festival. Kate's already shared the first person she'd like to spend an hour with and we're up to person number two. Who's that? My person number two is Roy Ananda. Roy Ananda. Yes. So tell me about Roy. Why would you like to spend an hour with him? So Roy's also a South Australian artist, so there's a theme developing here. But I know Roy from the industry. I think uh, I probably don't know him for quite as long as I've known Sarah but I have certainly seen him at exhibitions and things many times over the years and we've collaborated before on an exhibition at the old Experimental Art Foundation that is no longer around but I curated an exhibition with him and another artist Johnny Dady a number of years ago and so I've worked with him before and we've worked with him at Sala before and he's just a really great guy. (laughs) He's just... um. I think something I was saying earlier about how nice it is to sit down and have a conversation with someone that you already know and that you know that you can have a good conversation and and not be, I don't know, just be really comfortable, I suppose, and that old dinner party game of choosing people that you would want to spend time with and, you know, the beautiful concept behind this show, I suppose, is why would you choose to spend time with that person? And for me, it's, I guess, about the quality of conversation and where you can go with that. And Roy is just a really fascinating, he's got a fascinating mind, the way he thinks about things. He's one of those people that I I guess you could say in a very endearing way, he's a a little bit daggy, a real nerd or a geek. And I actually had a conversation with him recently as to what the difference is between nerd and geek. And we involved a couple of other people in the conversation who are also self-identifying nerds and or geeks. And I think we all had quite Uh, overlapping but different ultimate definitions of those words. What was the conclusion? Well, I think it's probably an ongoing conversation, so there's no conclusion. Something for a dinner party (laughs) maybe. (laughs) (laughs) But my my take on it was that a nerd, now let me get this right because it's easy to kind of accidentally flip it the other way, but I think a nerd is someone who is book smart, so maybe someone who is really good with the facts about, you know, often it's related to the sciences, but it could be any discipline I suppose. And I think a geek is more someone who has an interest in certain subcultures whether it's science fiction or gaming gaming exactly oh, yeah, right. yeah yeah so that that's my take on it and I'm happy for other people to have different interpretations and definitions and you know we certainly I'll put a poll up on Facebook yeah. <laughs> oh please do and let me know the results I'll, I'll follow it because you know everyone that I had the conversation with had a slightly different definition and that's totally that's fine and really interesting to see how people came to those definitions but I would say that Roy is a geek and I say that very lovingly (laughs) a daggy geek a daggy geek I feel the love oh dear Roy (laughs) (laughs) but he um he has a lot of interests that I think fit into that kind of geek label and you know so science fiction is definitely one of those and he's made this incredible work about Star Wars before and it was this oh it was just awe-inspiring it was in the Samstag Museum and it was probably seven or eight years ago now and it was you know that opening sequence of Star Wars with the credits yeah yeah yeah. and it's that's called the slow crawl into infinity and it's you know the sort of introduction the backstory on the war and what's been happening and and he just made that in like an analog version of the sort of digital. So he made it out of plywood. So he, when I say made it, I mean he used a saw or something to cut out the letters and built the words and the built whole thing. of the whole oh. script of whatever that is that kind of scrolls up. That must have the taken screen. ages. So much yeah. energy. Oh, I know, I know, because there's a lot of words there. And the other really amazing thing about it is he he did it in that sort of perspective as if you were looking at a screen like you know if you can picture that opening um, scene in Star Wars and as the script rolls on the words get smaller and closer together as they kind of roll up you know that that's the way of I guess artists draw perspective Mm. so that was something that when you look at medieval art that doesn't exist because they hadn't invented how to translate perspective yet 
And then when you start to look at Renaissance work, it's sort of from the 1400s onwards, you can see they've worked out if you draw something smaller, it looks further away. And so that's kind of, and those lines that get closer together, that's how people convey perspective, you know, still now in a a two-dimensional art piece. And Roy has done that by sort of making the letters smaller and further away and, and they go up as well. So it was this huge installation that took up the whole gallery space anyway sort of digress from talking about Roy but yeah that's one of his works and it's I guess pays homage to Star Wars and in a kind of very funny on one hand like homemade DIY but on the other hand I mean the resources required to do a DIY project on that scale is also awe-inspiring so all these different levels but yeah Star Wars and the other thing which I think most people might agree is pretty daggy is Dungeons and Dragons (laughs) Now, it's it's cool again because of Stranger Things and I can acknowledge that and I think there's a phrase and I think I probably heard it from Roy but it's geek is chic or something like that. <laughs> and like my brother, I've got an older brother and he used to play D&D growing up and, you know, like especially in the early 80s and – or throughout the 80s, you know, I guess when – I don't really know if that's when it was at its peak or if it's happened after that, but that's certainly when I learnt about it. That was probably the epitome of, of geek, but it's so beautiful. And I think there's something so, so beautiful about someone having a really earnest love for something and exploring that with complete disregard for whether it's cool or not, someone having a hobby, whatever that is, and often artists and, and everyone, I suppose – can have really unique interests and hobbies. And I often think to myself, God, I'm pretty boring because I don't think I have something that is uh, all that unique. You know, I love reading and I love cooking and I love going to exhibitions and movies. And But, you know, some people have a really peculiar interest. And there is – I really – again, I admire that. I just think that's, that's so special because often people are like channeled into – mainstream interests or whatever's available but people that are really into I don't know highland dancing or carving whittling whistles or something I don't know there's something really special about that that sort of speaks to diversity and again coming back to what we were saying before about doing something just for the sake of doing it and for your own enjoyment and you know well-being and everything so Mm Yeah, there's something sort of that sits as part of a slightly larger story, but that's something that I really love about Roy is his deep obsession with some of these things, shameless obsessions, but that also translates into his practice, which is really quite fascinating. What's your first memory of Roy? Oh, I actually don't know. Apologies, Roy. I'm not really sure when we first met. It would have been at an art thing, at an exhibition, and I so I actually don't know, but I can remember some of the first exhibition of his that I think I saw, at least elements of it, and that was riffing on Warner Brothers. And, you know, there's those... Bugs Bunny. Bugs and Bunny, oh, Elmer Fudd. Tweety Pie. T- that, that yeah, all yep, yep, yep. All of them. Jerry, Sylvester. That, just- a lot of that was very high slapstick and probably not a lot else going on yeah. there. But, you know, that again, that makes up those sort of cultural memories of who we are and how we first formed ideas about the world. And this exhibition that Roy made really like riffed on some of those Warner Brothers tropes. So if you think about, you know, there's always characters that saw like a love interest and their heart would beat out of their chest. Yep. And he made this work which sort of tried to mirror that and it was like a, a jumper and then a giant heart that had beaten out of the chest and uh, sort of tumbled onto the ground further away. And that was actually on the Sala poster last year. So people might be able to recall what that looked like if you want to get a visual around that. But that that was one of the pieces in this show. And another piece, another one of those classic Warner Brothers things is, you know, someone might get hit over the head with an anvil or, you know, they might tumble down the cliff or something and then they end up with birds or stars flying around their head. Yeah. And that's a way of kind of going, oh, this person's just bumped their head. They're seeing stars. And he made this artwork where it sort of looks like a structure where you'd sit down and put your feet into and, and then you pop your head up in between, in this ring and it's got a little train with I think stars on it or something and that actually it was like a train track that moved around your head so it was like yep the stars that are spinning around your head it was a way of conveying that in this beautiful sort of again DIY handmade aesthetic that was referring back to 
Warner Brothers, which so many people are familiar with. So what song have you chosen to go with Roy? So the song is called We Broke Each Other's Hearts and it's by a local artist, Max Savage, and I chose it because, like that piece that I was just referring to of Roy's, the connection between that really like visceral heart thumping out of your chest. Similarly, I think Max just has this amazing beautiful rough raw voice and we broke each other's hearts in the way that the song comes in it's just it's just feels very real and raw it's one of those songs I think that anyone who's ever had their heart broken can relate to and I think you know really often really good music can be just written in such a way that it could be true for anyone there's enough ambiguity in there that you can put your own story onto that Mm. and I think that's everyone's experience that could be everyone's experience and Max's voice is just it's got this sort of raw honesty to it that it just feels like a really again just a really unfiltered unfiltered in the same way that Roy's work is just this kind of really obvious almost two-dimensional depiction of what love feels like and so I thought that was quite a nice match between Max and and Roy's visual and musical depictions of, of love. So this song is called We Broke Each Other's Hearts by Max Savage. We broke each other's hearts, you know we broke each other's hearts. We broke each other's hearts like it was destined from the start. Too bold and too familiar. Too young and too afraid and now it's down We broke each other's hearts when we left it all unsaid We were looking for a past and now it haunts us every day And baby if you remember I remember too, well I remember And I was standing in the doorway Staring at the kitchen floor You were playing with your hands and sobbing softly I'd hold you but I'm not sure It's a shame you didn't mean it When I meant every word and more When it's a game baby it seems tame to try redemption We made the rules, we made the laws And we broke each other's hearts, you know We broke each other's hearts, you know We broke each other's hearts Just to see it could be done And if you dared me, babe, I'd kiss you If you let me get that close, would you dare me? So raise your glass up to the ceiling Let it smash down on the floor Keep your head above the water It's still so close, it's still so raw And we broke each other's hearts When we broke each other's hearts We were trying to grow up faster But we cut each other down And it's the trying that defeats me When the memory's just a sound I hear it now And we broke each other's hearts like it was easy being free And I left you to your anger And you left me to my greed And as love was meant forever So the ache will never fade, will never fade Will never fade